Good morning and welcome one and all. Uh, Michelle continues uh, her second week of vacation and we welcome Eric to our, uh, Eric Lawson to our pulpit this morning. Thank you for your gift of time to, to us all. We are blessed to be here together and, and on Zoom. Welcome one and all. Today, we recognize that we stand on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron-Wendat peoples who lived here and protected the lands from ancient times. These indigenous people respected nature, guarded the animals, and tended the land for thousands of years. May we continue to do the same. Today, I light our memorial candle in loving memory of Thomas Somerville. Thomas is the husband of Catherine Hill, son-in-law of Millie Hill, and with two sons and their families, Kieran and Don Donan. His service of celebration for his life will be on Saturday, April the 20th, with visitation beginning at 10 a.m. and the service at 11.30. That's here um, at Edith Rankin with a reception to follow. May, may his light continue to shine in the lives of all who knew him. For the light and love of Thomas Somerville. We light the Christ candle this morning because Jesus is the light that guides us when we are walking our journey. The Easter candle continues to brighten our path in times of darkness. This candle that represents Christ among us lights the way to becoming children of God. May the light from this candle shine in all of our hearts today. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning, and for everyone out on Zoom. I notice uh, Fran Day is here this morning. We'd welcome you to be here. I noticed that her son Clark Day is here, and is another son, Clark, uh, beside you, and David. David Day. So I guess it's going to be a good day. <laughs> I also noticed that Cal Connor is here this morning. I still haven't got that football from you. <laughs> We're called to worship. Oh God, this morning you called us out of darkness to get up and come to church. We answer your call, Lord. You calm our worried minds and troubled hearts by saying, peace be with you. We answer your call, Lord. You call us to love you as you have loved us. We answer your call, Lord. You call us to love our neighbors as ourselves, which sometimes is difficult. We answer your call, Lord. You call us to be your children. Yes. We answer your call, Lord. Yes. We are the children of God. And our centering prayer comes from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? 
How long would you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. Amen. So let us uh, join together in more voices, 157. I am a child of God. Our chancel choir will now sing our anthem, We Believe That This Is Jesus.
Come and see, come and see. We I welcome all the children, one, and anyone else who'd like to join me up here for children's time. I think you are, Stella. You're the only one, but I'm so glad you're here. So tell me, have you ever gone on a long, long trip and you're driving in the car and you're really excited about getting to your destination. Yes. Yes. And sometimes you might say to your mom and dad, Are we there yet? <laughs> and we didn't even practice this. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you would say, Are we there yet? Oh my goodness. And you're just so excited about everything. But you know what? We are on a learning journey. Not just you and all the children, but everyone here we are all on a learning journey all about spiritualness and becoming a good person and sometimes when you go to um a new place i've just changed my card here just in case i lose track sometimes when you go to a new place you might wear a name tag because not everyone will know who you are so i have some name tags here today that i'm gonna wear okay so the first one I would put on would be this one. What does it say? Miss Thorne. Mrs. Thorne. That is my name. I'm Mrs. Thorne. I don't always use that name though. It's kind of formal. Maybe when I was teaching in school, sometimes they would call me Mrs. Thorne. But I would prefer that people call me this. Lorna. <laughs> Lorna. That's right. So that's my name too. But you know what? I have another name too. This one. Mom. Mom. I have three boys. Yeah. Then the oldest one's going to be 40. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Oh. Yes, I have three boys. But then you know what? I have another name tag too. Let me get it. Grandma. Grandma, that's right. Grandma. I have two grandchildren and we just learned there's a third one on the way. I'm very excited. Yes. So I have three grandchildren. But did you know that my name and your name is in the Bible? Oh, yeah. Did you? Oh, you're, you're, she's so up. She read it. Well, so yes. So in today's scripture reading, it's the first chapter of John, verses 1. And it says, see what God See what a great love the Lord has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And we sang a song about it today, too, about singing, we are all children of God. So that's another name tag that I have here. I am a child of God. And whoops, a daisy. Oh, now I'm out of order. Okay, so I am a child of God. I have one for you, too. That you can say, and you can go give one to Madame Ruth. Go give that one to Madame Ruth. That one can be for you. All right. How about you go give this one to Kim, the organist? He's he's a child of God. All right. Oh, perfect. Go give one to your grandpa. And 
you can give one to Eric Lawson. He's up here. He's the minister today. That's great. Thank you so much. So I have some other stickers, though, today, too. I have some hearts. So I have a heart sticker here. Hmm. Where do you think I should put it? On your name tag. Well, I do have one on my name tag, but I should put it somewhere else. Maybe I should put it on my heart because um, I can feel. Oh, first of all, what does the heart mean? A heart. Know. What does a heart usually mean? Love. Love. That's right, love. So I could put it on my, um, on my heart area so I can feel the love. Or I could put it up here on my brain because sometimes... Remember the love. I remember and I think about love. You're right. Or I could put it on my mouth because I talk about love. But you know what? God doesn't want us just to think about love and to feel love and to speak love. He wants more than that. Give love. And giving love. Give is what kind of word? Do you know what to, kind of, to, uh, It's an action word, isn't it? It's, You're yeah, giving it's love to, to people. It's to, I don't know how to describe give without saying give. It's to give something. That's exactly. It's like to take something and let someone else have it to keep and hopefully they share it with someone else. And again, sharing is an action word. So because it's an action word, we're using our hands for action words. So I'm going to put it on my hand. I've got some for you too. You can put one on your hand. And here's another one. Put one on the other. I'm just going to put it on. I gave you one. You have a heart. Oh, okay. You can put it there. Sure. I'm going to put another one on my other hand, too, because I want everyone to see that I'm going to try and give love. All right, let's see what page I'm on now. <laughs> All right, we did that, we did that, we did that. Oh, we're almost there. How are you doing with that heart? Perfect. All right, so maybe we can say a little prayer now. Are you ready? Okay, and the choir can help us with this. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, Dear God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for calling us your children. Thank you for calling us your children. Thank you for filling us up with your love. Thank you for filling us up with your love. Help us to show our love to other people. Help us to show our love to other people. Amen. Amen. Now on the way out, I'm going to give you the stickers and maybe you can give them to some of the other people in the congregation. Okay. okay. There you go. Yeah, if anybody else would like a Child of God sticker, just leave some money in the collection plate, please. <laughs> Good morning. Our scripture readings this morning begins with the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there was no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who, who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. And from the Gospel of Luke, of chapter 24, reading from verse 36 to 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. 
They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened and why do, you, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, see that it is myself. Touch and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were dis disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be, be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God. Well, last Sunday, the women of Edith Rankin Memorial United Church led our service with the theme, Walking the Journey. Are we there yet? No, we are not there yet. How many times have you heard children say that when we were driving on a journey Say traveling somewhere during March, midwinter school break, and that was your response. Well, we are on a journey, a spiritual journey that repeats every year. The journey begins with Ash Wednesday, when Christians all over the world receive ashes on their foreheads as a sign of repentance. We journey through the 40 days of Lent, and we are offered the spiritual disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. These spiritual practices are meant to bring us closer to God through daily personal and weekly communal prayer. Through fasting, not only from meat or other foods, but from those things that may interfere with our relationship with God and through giving to others, especially the poor, to put others ahead of ourselves. Are we there yet? No, not yet. Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday reminds us of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem when people waved palm branches and shouted Hosanna to welcome Jesus as a Messiah, a triumphant king who had saved them from the Romans. But Jesus rode on a humble donkey. He was not a king of this world. The journey continues with Monday Thursday or Holy Thursday, when at the Last Supper with his disciples in the upper room, Jesus not only eats the traditional Passover meal, but kneels down and washes his disciples' feet as an example of how disciples are to humbly serve others. Are we there yet? No, we are not. The Easter Triduum continues on Good Friday when Jesus is crucified and at the third hour he dies Christians venerate the cross not as a sign of death, but of life, eternal life. Are we there yet? No. Holy Saturday is quiet. Jesus is in the tomb. But after sunset, a fire is lit and blessed. Candles are lit 
from the fire, and out of the darkness, points of light fill churches all over the world. The celebration of the Easter Vigil welcomes new Christians into the Christian church community. On Holy Saturday, we gather here to remember Keith Notley, who died and was previously a member of our choir. Are we there yet? No, not yet. Easter Sunday is the holiest day of the Christian church's liturgical year. Christians sing Alleluia and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It reminds us that through following Jesus, we will be called to eternal life. Are we there yet? No, the journey continues. Easter Sunday afternoon, the liturgy of the Christian church reads from the Gospel of Luke about two people walking down the steep hill from Jerusalem to where they live in the village of Emmaus. They are on a journey. After the Passover in the temple, when they meet a man who walked along with them on the road. This couple invited the man into their home for dinner and in the breaking of the bread met the risen Christ who suddenly disappeared. They were so excited that they ran back uphill to Jerusalem to tell the other apostles. Are we there yet? No. Today's reading from the Gospel of Luke immediately follows the Emmaus story. Jesus appears to his closest friends who are afraid and think Jesus is a ghost. Jesus greets them with a calming blessing. Peace be with you. Jesus shows them his hands and his feet where they see the holes of the nails that held him to the cross. The disciples still don't believe, so Jesus eats some broiled fish to prove he is alive like them. Further, Jesus opened their minds to the scriptures, the law, the prophets, and the Psalms that predicted a Messiah who must die and rise on the third day with Easter eyes, they recognize Jesus as this Messiah who brings repentance and forgiveness of sins to all people, and that the apostles and disciples are witnesses of these things. Are we there yet? Not quite. One of the apostles was a teenager named John who was a witness to the resurrection. While on the cross, Jesus entrusted John to his mother Mary to be her son in place of Jesus. In his first letter, now a very old man, John writes from Ephesus in what is now Turkey. John is writing to a group of people who believe that Jesus was a spirit, a holy ghost, and was not to be identified with the human Jesus and his death for salvation. Does this sound like disbelief, like the disciples? Does this sound like disbelief from us? Do we really believe in the resurrection and salvation of Jesus? Is Easter real? But John was a witness to the resurrection of Jesus. John in his writings has a basic message. God is love. Jesus shared in God's love with others. And that people who do not love others do not know Jesus. John writes, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. 
And that is what we are. God loves us first. Then we love God through loving Jesus and following his commandments. What are they? To love God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself, even your enemies. Are we there yet? Hmm. John also writes, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. As followers of Jesus Christ today, we are God's children. Through karatos, the Greek word for charity or love, you show your love to others every day by visiting the sick, by bringing people to church, by using Zoom to bring church services to people in their homes, by raising money for the mission of the church through auctions, yard sales, bus trips, oh, and by baking pies, Betty Jean, <laughs> and by Easter cookies, Lorna. There are so many other ways you show your caring and your love for others. We are God's children now. On Friday, we, many of us gathered at James Reed Funeral Home to remember Laurel Connor, who was also a member of our chancel choir. Are we there yet? Wait. The journey through the 50 days of Easter continues through Ascension Sunday when Jesus was lifted up into heaven, through Pentecost Sunday when the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples and the Christian church was born, through Trinity Sunday which proclaims God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and finally Corpus Christi or the Sunday of the Body of Christ. Finally, through walking this journey from Ash Wednesday to Corpus Christi, we move from the ashes of last year's palms to receiving the body of Christ in communion to become the body of Christ within the church. We become the children of God. Are we there yet? My Lord Jesus, he just lifted his head, he just lifted his head, just lifted up his head. My Lord Jesus, he just lifted his head, including me, including me, including me. My Lord Jesus, he just lifted his hands, he just lifted his hands, just lifted up his hands my lord jesus he just lifted up his hands and blessed all mankind including me including me including me He just lifted his cross, he just lifted his cross, 
just lifted up his cross. My Lord Jesus, he just lifted up his cross and saved all mankind, including me, including me. Including me. For our responsorial prayers of the people, after I say we pray, I welcome you, invite you to uh, say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, thank you for the Lent and Easter season to remind us each year of your love for us through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, thank you for calling us to be your children. And as your children, Help us to love you and to love our neighbors, no matter who they are. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for the leaders of our governments to place the common good above personal gain. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we pray for our church that it will be a light in the darkness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we pray for peace between the people of Ukraine and Russia, the people of Gaza and Israel, and other places in the world where peace is difficult, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hailing Lord, we pray for the sick in hospitals and at home, and we pray for doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals, and for those you would like to pray for at this moment. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, we pray for those who have died. May they receive your Easter gift of resurrection to eternal life with you, especially Keith Notley and Laurel Connor. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us gather our prayers together by repeating aloud <clears throat> the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, We need to give Eric a little break here. <laughs> Thanks for your gift of your time and talents this morning, Eric. Few things coming up. Um, in tidings, you may have noticed that somebody took the initiative to put a box out front for the eclipse glasses. If you still have yours, get it to the church this week, and Brenda Moyer is going to make sure that it gets given ahead. We're going to pass it along uh, through the city of Kingston. I believe they're being sent to South America, correct? Latin America. To Latin America for the next eclipse. Another event for this week is there are still two more days of photos happening. Uh, if you didn't take the time to sign up to have your picture taken, I encourage you to quickly go on the website and do just that. There's still a few spaces on Monday and Tuesday. 
We are very, very grateful to Marg Merkley and the whole team who have made this happen for us, and we look forward to seeing the directory when it comes out later uh, in the spring. Coming up is the Euchre Tournament. Progressive Euchre, Tom and Rhonda are off holidaying and relaxing, so they'll be ready for this tournament on uh, April the 26th. It's a community event. Bring your friends and neighbors and plan on having a wonderful time. I know they've got collected some fabulous door prizes, and it's always a lot of fun. Let's fill the lower hall. Garage sale is coming up, and Lorna is working tirelessly selling the best things online. And you can see she's left a little thermometer of earnings so far. She, we, collectively with what we have given her, she has raised $1,300 already. So we thank Lorna. <laughs> Continue to bring in your special items and your not so special items and they'll they'll all go on the day of the garage sale, which is Saturday, May the 11th. Lorna also has a sign up sheet out there because we need volunteers uh, on that day and on the day before for setup. So put your name somewhere and see if you can't help for this always a fun event. Coming up also is our Classics birthday party. By now you should have received your invitation. And uh, I know last week Cheryl Baker was quick to tell us that if you had not received an invitation, but you had achieved the wonderful age of 80, you should speak to her or to Brenda Moyer so that we can give you an invitation. The rest of us, we can look forward to the party on uh, Sunday, May the 5th from two to four. Two two to four. So please circle that on your calendar and plan to attend. The Classics team is also looking for a little bit of help on that day. Various jobs, Ruth has them all listed out, so if you would see Ruth after, if you could help on the day, that would be terrific. There's always lots to do. I saved the most important message for last and I will read it so that it sticks in your head. Members and adherents of the congregation are called to gather for a special congregational meeting after the morning service on April the 28th to consider a motion to endorse Edith Rankin Memorial United Church becoming an affirming congregation. It cannot be stressed enough that this is a very important meeting regarding the future of this congregation. All members and adherents are encouraged to attend in person. Note, anticipating the possibility of a secret ballot, arrangements are being tested to ensure our Zoom participants can vote with the same privacy as those in attendance. One limitation, however, is that Zoom attendees will be restricted to one vote per connected device. So that means if you're a couple, you would still only get one vote on your laptop unless you go to separate rooms and sign in separately, which of course can be done as well. Unless they are individually connected, couples attending by Zoom will have one vote. Questions can be addressed to John Moyer, the chair of the congregation. Uh, this announcement will appear in tidings, so if you need to get a hold of John, you can uh, look up his contact information in tidings. This is the life and work of Edith Rankin Memorial United Church. As our offering is brought forward today, I encourage you all to think of what actually falls onto that plate, what fills it up especially the gifts that you can't see. We continue to be grateful for all the ways you all serve. Please join in our offering response. It'll be on the screen.
Lord God, through fasting and almsgiving, we have journeyed through the repentance of Lent into Holy Week. We have journeyed through the suffering of the Easter Triduum. We have journeyed through the joy of the resurrection. And now we journey through the assurance of the Easter season. Bless our alms to be used for the mission of Edith Rankin Memorial United Church, Lord. Strengthen us to continue our lifelong mission and journey to you. And all God's people can say, Amen. Amen. So let us join together in our closing hymn, More Voices 171. We extinguish this candle in memory of Tom Somerville, husband to Catherine and son-in-law to Millie Hill. May he rest in peace. I would like to say a personal thank you to those who helped me today. Patty Speck with the introductions and the tidings. 
Lorna Thorne for forming young faith for the children, Gordon Sinclair for the scripture readings, Kim Barney for giving me something to sing, <laughs> and Paul Curry for putting music and words on the screen, and also, our, of course, our tech team that has helped us, helps us every Sunday. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you his peace. Now go out in the peace of Christ to, so, to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.